that clause that says, this is our salvation right here. Regardless of all the other things that we said, all the other things that our forefathers have done, or even when we've gone astray, we remember, we can go back to that. If we sincerely call upon him, he will be found. And he says, thou shalt be blessed above all the people. Why? Because you hearken to my commandments. Right? So it's going back to this. And he also says, and the Lord will take away from thee all sickness. And all these diseases that he put on the Egyptians, it was not put upon us when we do the commandments, right? And I know some of us, including myself, have been had some illnesses and aches and pain, but yet the Most High has seen fit to keep me alive and to strengthen me. Because there were times when I, was, I knew I was out, and the Most High said, no, not yet, not yet. <laughs> And I said, so I got. You know, because I'm sure many of us have come, you know. And if you haven't, live long enough, you will. You know, but one thing for sure, God protects us. And it also says, as they were going to capture the land, he said, don't be afraid of the nations, for Yah is with you. You've seen what he's done in Egypt. So what he did in Egypt was not only to deliver them, but also to build them up, to give them that confidence that I'm the same God that did that for you then, and as you go forward, I'm going to still be with you, and I'm going to fight for you. As you recall, we didn't defeat the Egyptians. <laughs> we didn't do anything. Other than believe in Yah and follow what he was telling us through Moses. And even when, as we get ready to go into the land, it wasn't us, although we did have to go and fight that time, but still we knew that Yah had our back. And that gave us the confidence to go and do. But you need more than confidence to be able to defeat life's challenges. You need to do the right thing by Yah. You need to do that which is right in Yah's eyes for him to have your back because that's that's the deal here, he's saying. Because you do this, I'm going to do that. Because you don't do this, I'm going to do that. So it's not a one-way street. It's a two-way street. So we have to work with Yah. Yah is saying, work with me. I got your back, but you got to make an effort. You got to do something to show me that you're worthy of it. Matter of fact, I've already given it to you, but you need to believe in me that my word is good. So you have to go out and do it. Isn't that what life is about? Can somebody live life for you? Don't you have to go out and experience life yourself? You can't sit back at home and say, son, Go and enjoy the day for me. Go out there and have some fun and bring it back to me. No, you got to get up off your couch and go and do it. Just like keeping Shabbat. You have to keep Shabbat. I know there was a time when the pandemic, we had no choice but to stay home. Right? Unless we are ill and we can't get out the house, there's no reason for us to be home at this point. Sorry, I'm just putting it blank. Right? Because he said, you shall go out where the Lord has placed his name to be there. He didn't say stay home and lay down. You should have a holy convocation. And the holy convocation is by going to the place where Yah has placed his name there. Over the step of nobody's toes. But that's what, what is the prophet telling people? And I'm not the prophet, but I'm from reading this book. That's what the prophets were saying. Israel, wake up. But if you're not careful, you're going to lose what you got. And that's what he's saying here. 
do this law. Don't read about it. Don't watch the law. Do the law. Am I making that up? That's what it says. Now, you can hate me if you want. Be mad at me if you want. But that's what it says. Sorry to be blunt. Sometimes I lack a little finesse. But I'm just saying it like it is. I'm getting to the point, you know, so haters will be haters. <laughs> but this is what it says in so many words. And he says, uh, and he said, you saw what Yah did unto the Egyptians, right? Thou shalt not bring, and then we talked about when you go out there and you, you take over and you find all their silk, gold, deities, and silver and all that. He said, don't take that stuff and bring it into your house. It's a devoted thing. It's a doomed object. That's what it means. But you say it says they're devoted, but that's what it is. It is a curse thing because devoted also means it was used for a certain purpose. So since it was used for that purpose, that spirit of the thing is in it. Don't bring it into your homes. So you gotta be careful. You know, like I said, I'm good with everybody else. But when it comes to worshiping Yah, it don't mix. It just doesn't mix. Not because I say so, not because I feel that way. Because it keeps telling us over and over. How many times it kept telling us, don't go after their God. Don't, don't uh, give your children to them. Don't do this, don't do that regarding the other gods, right? And like I said last week, other people have a place in the earth because Yah ordained it. He said to the children of God, I give you this land. To the children of Esau, I give you that land. To the children of Edom, I give you that land. Did I say Edom and Esau are two different people? That's what the book says, because it said that, right? A lot of people say Edomites are Esau. But I see here where they make a distinction between Esau, Edom, Israel. They're all different. That's what the book says. And you can check it out. And tell me if I'm wrong. So other people have their place in the world. But Israel, you're not other people. You have to first of all know who you are. And Rabbi Levy always to say, of course that came from Socrates, right? Man, know thyself, and then what? Be yourself. You can't be somebody else. I mean, a lot of people try to be unlike other people, but after a while, that gets tired, <laughs> you know, and they can't keep it up. So, but you can be yourself all day long. But in order to be yourself, you got to know who you are, what your purpose is, because Yah has a purpose for you. He ordained it, but you got to go for it. You got to do it. Don't just read about it. I know I'm Israel. I had a brother tell me, I know I'm Israel, but I'm still in the church because whatever, right? Well, if you know you're, who you are, then you got to break out that comfort zone. I can understand, you know. I'm not saying I could know, <laughs> but I understand his position. You know, his wife and everybody. He's comfortable there. But Something inside of him is not. So at some point he's gonna to have to decide because right now he's he's wrestling with something. I, I know I should be over there, but I'm over here. So it's so the thing is you're more free and happy when you can be yourself. But when you gotta to pretend to be something you're not, you're not living to your full potential. You know, and that's what we strive to be, the true, he said, man, be true to thine own self. When you can be true to yourself, then you can be true to others. When you lie to yourself, how are you going to be honest with somebody else? <laughs> that doesn't work. And you certainly ain't fooling God. You know. Then he says, uh, all the commandments which I command thee this day 
shall you observe to do them? And then he talked about that he, well, let me go do this. It's it. All the commandments which I command thee this day shall ye observe to do that ye may live and multiply and go in and present the land which the Lord swore unto your fathers. And thou shalt remember all the way which the Lord thy God hath led these, thee these forty years in the wilderness that he might afflict thee to prove thee to know what was in thy heart whether thou wouldest keep his commandments or no. You mean that was all the tests? All these hardships that he puts us through? It's just to test us? You mean he's trying to figure out if we're fair weather friends? You know about the fair weather friends, right? When things are good, oh man, they should be full. They'll be here. But soon as things get a little rough, where they at? Where they at? <laughs> They're not here. They're gone. This is where you find out who the true soldiers are. When things get rough, where are you at? Are you going to step up or are you going to give up? Oh, it's a losing cause. No, that's when you step up and say, I want this. I'm a fight for it. You know what we say? Go out there and fight for that land. You ain't going to fight for it sitting in your bed. <laughs> you know, at home. Or doing something else, losing focus. You want something, you got to put in the effort and the energy for it. Go for it. Even Nike saying, just do it. Although some people say, well, Nike, that's a bad example because that was a great God. You know, some people would say that. But I'm just saying that even the nations know the secrets of getting things done. They know the secret. It's not a secret, really. Or you to hear all these things. The secret. You hear about these uh, programs? The secret. The secret has been in this book all along. And they found out about it, and they're calling it the secret. Because people like secrets. You know, when you have some of that secret, that's how you get somebody's attention. Try to hide something from people. Guess what? You got them. You got their attention. Oh, why you, what's he doing? Right? It ain't no secret because Yah has been telling us all along you have the power within you. You have to turn it on. Don't be timid. Go for it. Every day. Because those that are not, tim those that are not timid, they're the one who gets it. The early bird gets the word. Don't get there late. <laughs> get the blessing. Be one of the first to get there. That's the type of spirit. The Rabbi Lucky always used to say, if a bird will have a nest, he must build it himself. Same with Israel. You want to have something, you got to put it to work. And with us, it's a collective work. Not just individual work. Individual makes Strong individuals, blessed individuals. But Israel is not an individual. Israel is a people. People got to come together. I'm, I'm talking to empty seats. <laughs> Where are the people at? What are you doing? I hope you're not at home if you can get out. Obviously, if you're shut in, this is where you need to be. But if you're healthy and strong, you need to be, if not in this condensor, you need to be in some condensor. Praise it, Yah. That's what it's about. I just feel a little jealous if we can't take out the uh, Torah. Because, you know, we got to praise Yah. You know. So, and then he says, right? Uh, that you may inflict the, right, we just read that. Oh, yeah. Right. It says, uh, and thou shalt remember all the way which the Lord thy God hath led thee these forty years in the wilderness, that he might afflict thee this day. 
Right, we already told them, right, to find, to prove thee, to know what was in thy heart. See, in your heart, what's in your heart is your real you, is your real thoughts. Because what we say to people a lot of times is that's what's in our heart. Because when you speak what's in your heart, sometimes you might offend people because you might tell them the truth. Like I tell the truth sometimes. And that's one of my bad, bad things, my downfall. Sometimes I tell people what's in my heart, not out of malice, but because that's what I'm telling you is in my heart. And we know that sometimes the truth is not always the best. We need to be diplomatic, but we still need to be truthful. So there's two ways of telling the truth. You can give it to them raw, which is not the best. Because anything that's bitter goes down bad. But that's what diplomat, diplomacy is. That you can tell them the same message and make it smooth to go down, but you're still telling the truth. So I got to work on the diplomatic skills myself. Everybody's not a diplomat. But it's a good, good thing to be. Because honestly, why... You get more done when you get people's cooperation rather than if you shove it down their throat. Okay? It's always the better deal. So it pays to be diplomatic. It's just that sometimes I lose a little of my cool. You know, I just might not say it like I should. But we should consider. As a matter of fact, this is coming up to the next uh, next sentence. Right? So that you may know what's in thy heart, whether thou wouldest keep his commandments or not. It's when you're put to the test. That's when your true self is revealed. Because people can talk a lot. Yeah, 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 yeah. But when it comes down to putting the test, you find out who's real and who's not real. And third verse says, And he afflicted thee and suffered thee to hunger and fed thee with manner which thou knowest, knowest not neither did thy fathers know, that he might make thee to know that man does not live by bread alone. What does that mean? We're not talking about just food. We're talking about all material things. Your job, your money, your bank account, all your resources that you have. That's not what you live by alone but by everything that proceeds out of the mouth of the Lord does man live. Right? Because you could have all these power, but without God, protection, you're not going to prosper. And it says, Thy raven wax not old upon thee, neither did thou a foot swell these forty years. Now that's a miracle. <laughs> You're walking out there in the desert and all kinds of lands. And by the way, they were not only the desert, because they went into places that were not deserts as well. It was 40 years, right? Because those cities that were, those are not cities in the desert. Those are cities that were flourishing. They were places, so they were cold. And all wilderness is not desert. But you have wilderness like the Amazon, right? That's not the desert place, but you got all kinds of things. So, but there are places out there that are deserts, you know, dry. So anyway, they have different terrain. But and thou shalt, so thou shalt consider in thy heart. This is the word I wanted to go into. Consider. What does consider mean? To really think about something earnestly, right? to think about the consequences of these actions. If I do this, what's going to happen? If I say this, what's going to happen, right? So he's saying, thou shalt consider thy house, that as a man chastened his son, so the Lord thy God chastened thee. So all these trials and tribulations that Yah put us through, is also to teach us, right? Because when you think about it, 
when your children do something, do you just say, oh, it's okay. <laughs> Don't worry about it. You'll grow out of it. That's it. Some people do that. But that's not a wise thing. You have to correct your children in love. But you still have to feel it. Because that's what gets their attention. So we say you should consider. And that's one thing I noticed. People don't consider anymore their actions. People just do things so irrational. Like somebody cuts you off, you go out and you shoot them. That's not considering, right? Yesterday, I saw something on the internet. A Wendy's employee, he was there in the counter. A man comes up to him. They don't always give you the audio. He had his train and he came back to complain. The employee went around the counter. He punched the guy, which was the older guy. The guy dies. Right? And this is a young man. Probably in his 30s, 20s, 30s, I'm not sure. A young strong guy. Is he considered before he went around the counter? Now, he killed this man because the man complained to him. So he'd be considered the complaint versus where he's going to be at for the rest of his life. I'm not sure that's a good equal exchange, right? So if people were to consider my actions versus the reward, isn't that what we about? It can't because as a consequence of doing this, this is going to happen. So if people would consider before they do something, they might be in a better place. But here God is saying, consider doing my commandments because the reward you're going to get. And he says, beware, let not forget that the Lord, Yah, right, is the word. And don't, and don't, don't, don't 11, 11 says, uh, beware, let not forget the Lord, uh, Yah, and not keeping his commandments and his ordinances and his statutes. That's a warning that Moses is giving to the children of Israel. And when you have, and that's like, in the next verse it says, Lest when thou hast eaten and art satisfied, and has built goodly houses and dwell therein. Right? So when you start getting prosperous, and you forget about God. Isn't that what happens sometimes? We start doing good. We get prosperous. Ah, uh, I did it myself. I did this. Y'all are saying, don't forget. Yes, you did the work, but I had your back. Because if I don't protect you from all these other things that you have no control over, then you're really be in trouble. Because we don't we forget about Yah's invisible head, the protection that he has around us. So when you become satisfied and reach your goals, and you have a surplus money in the bank, don't forget about Yah. He says, you forget where you came from. The Rabbi Matthews used to say, never forget the bridge that brought you safely across the boundaries of your ignorance. And it shall be that if you forget God and you go to walk after other deities and serve them and worship them, they say, I forewarn you this day, for you shall surely perish if you follow other gods. Remember, forget not. <laughs> I didn't make that up. That's what it said. But nine, seven. Nine, seven. It said, Remember, forget not how thou didst make the Lord thy God walk in the wilderness. That's right, look it up. <laughs> that's right, it says. That's being redundant, right? But that's to make sure that 
you put it in your brain. That's it, embed it in your brain. Remember, don't forget. If that don't catch your attention, I don't know where else from. Uh, and it says, ye believe him not, nor hearken to his voice. That's in the 23rd verse. And you have been rebellious against the Lord, for the day I knew you. And now Israel, what does the Lord Yah require of thee? But to fear the Lord thy Yah, to walk in all his ways and to love him, and to serve the Lord thy Yah with all thy heart and with all thy soul, and to keep his commandments and his statutes for thy good. And then Micah answered the same, asked the same question. What did Micah say? This is Moses that said that, right? What does the Lord require of you? But to fear Yah, the Lord thy Yah, to walk all his ways and to love him, and to serve the Lord Yah with all thy heart, with all thy soul, to keep his commandments and statutes for thy good. And Micah said, What does the Lord require of you? To act justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. Is he saying the same thing? How do you figure out the same thing? Uh, okay. Uh, uh, right. So, he's not talking about keeping all the commandments, right? But in order for you to walk humbly, if you're doing the commandments, you're going to be walking humbly before Yah. You're going to love mercy. Because isn't Yah a merciful God? Although he will punish the guilty, but still, he is very merciful. So yes, Micah is saying the same thing in a different way. And even Solomon said, what did he say? Dear God, to keep his commandments, for that is the whole duty of man. For God will bring every secret work into judgment, whether it be good or whether it be evil. Is that the same thing he's talking about? Said differently? But he's talking about the same thing. And they said, he was the wisest man. And Moses was the humblest man. And Micah was one of the prophets. It says he was one of the twelve lesser prophets. Apparently they have prophets in different categories. And Micah was around the same time as Isaiah, Amos, and Hosea. So he wasn't out there by himself. So these were the same contemporaries for those guys. So those guys were in that corner, he was over there, but they're all saying the same message. That's like today. We have different connections and different people are teaching the word. So nobody has a monopoly of this word. This is God's word. And Yah will put the word in people in different, different ways. But it's the same message at the end of the day. Same message. Different languages. It's not only the Hebrew and English. This thing has been translated in all the major languages. And everybody's getting something from it. Now how deep is that? How powerful is that? Even people who are not Israelites are getting something out of it. And then, uh, uh, he says, this is very repetitive because it is human nature to forget where we came from. And he said, don't forget where you came from. And also, he says, uh, Frederick Douglass had this, uh, this thing that says, uh, don't, don't Judge me from the heights I didn't achieve, but judge me from the depths from which I came. Say, well, actually, Frank Jones said, You are not judged by the height you have risen, but from the depth you have climbed. And Rabbi Matthews is going to say, Don't judge me from the heights I didn't achieve, but judge me from the depths from which I came. So, you know, that's how you judge a man. So, that also can work against you if you say, well, I've had this knowledge for how many years and you still ain't doing much with it? Come on, you gotta step it up. You know, so this can work for you or against you. 
So you got to be honest. I want to do it the best I can, depending on where I came from, how far have I taken this to? Because a lot of us waste our talents. We waste our time where we could be more productive. We watch TV. I don't know, I waste a lot of time watching TV. I could do better than that. You know, we all have things we could improve, but first we have to be aware of it and then slowly, gradually make those changes. So I've already started cutting down on my TV time so that I can do be more productive because I'm still a young man. I'm only 66. You know, if the most high class me, I got a lot more to do. But again, it's all up to y'all. But what's up to me is what I do today. What am I going to do with the time that I have today? What am I going to do with the energy I have today? What am I going to do with my resources that I have today? What am I going to do in the synagogue that I have today? It's open today. I'm here today. I don't know about tomorrow, but I'm here today. And today is the only thing that counts. Tomorrow is not promised. Yesterday, well, it's in the books. <laughs> it's history. Hopefully it's a good history. Right? Because isn't that what the Bible is all about? It shows you examples, good examples and bad examples. How are you going to fare? Where am I going to see your picture at? <laughs> Are the good examples or the bad examples? It's your choice. How you live your life is going to determine your history. What you're going to be remembered by. Every time someone dies, not every time, but when we have our services, we say, good works are going to speak for me. By that time, it's too late. If you really did the right work, well, they're not going to say good things. Now that you're alive, today, what are you going to do today? Don't answer that. <laughs> but you got to ask yourself that and make the best of whatever life you have in you. When you have it, that after it's done, and it's too late. Anyway, I'm just about finished. Uh, yeah, like I said, this is very repetitive because it's trying to drill it in our mind so that we have no excuse to say, well, I didn't know, or I forgot. How can you forget? He keeps telling you over and over and over. So, Let's remember to not forget what the Lord requires of us. And we work from where we are. We don't try to do what we can do. We do what is within our power. And you take one step, and God will help you take the next step. With that, I say Shabbat Shalom. And I pray that you got something of what was said. And hopefully you're inspired to use your time today and be blessed. Shabbat Shalom.
is more like preaching today, right? <laughs> I, I was I was preaching. <laughs> That's not normally my style, but I don't know, I'm a little hot today. <laughs> you know, I, I'm telling you, right? Who am I? Who is this? <laughs> Who is this party? You can play it, but God rewrites it. That's right. Okay. So any comments? Any comments? Uh, you're good. Okay. All right. You know, I get me fired up. I get it. I get it. <laughs> All right. So we're, we're <laughs> we got the tithes and offering. Uh, okay. So announcements. Uh, I don't. I didn't get the announcement. Did you leave any announcements? Okay. Or we have the announcements. All right, Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Um, uh, uh, two two announcements. Uh, one is what tomorrow is uh, we have the ICBC Family Day at uh, Queensbridge Park on Forty First and over there, you know where we where we have the Rosh Hashanah when we go by the water. Forty Yeah, forty. Okay. Y'all know Astrodome. Yeah. <laughs> um, so that it starts at 11. It's from 11 to 4. Uh, and it says, you know, bring your own chairs. And, you know, we're going to have some hot dogs and things like that. But if you have special food that you eat, bring it for yourself. And, you know, they have like water, soda, things like that. So that's going to be from tomorrow at 11 to 4. It's the ICVC Family Day. So they're going to have music and some games and stuff. So come on down if you get a chance. Uh, next week on the 28th is the virtual graduation for all the graduates from 2022. So if you have somebody that graduated, we don't care if they graduated from kindergarten and go into first grade, you know, Please make sure that the committee has the name and picture or whatever they're going to do um, to, to do the virtual thing. Because they're going to be doing that and uh, I believe they're going to be giving out some kind of awards or everything. So, um, but they do have a committee for that and it's called the Graduation Committee. So like, I'm just passing on the, the, the word. Deborah would normally do this, but... She's uh, down south. Um, and then uh, I got two little cards here that I want to read uh, from Sister Sally. So she said, hey, everybody. But she said she sent this card here, and I think it's the cutest little thing. Because on it is a picture of a man kneeling down to his son in the playground. And he's kneeling over, he's got his hand on his shoulder. And he's talking to him, and he says, son, if you can't say something nice, say something clever. So that, 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 that's her little joke that she said to him. Don't be nice, be smart. <laughs> so you can see it if you want to. And then she just sent this other card, you know, um, uh, wishing you peace, uh, you know, to Beth Elohim and to the Levy family for passing our cousin. That's where they all are now in North Carolina. As a matter of fact, uh, I believe the service was this morning or sometime today. So that's where they are. And so they'll all be back uh, next week. So she just sent a little note uh, that says, Her sincere condolences for your loss to the 
Levy family, but the like mean by remember your cousin that Shabbat where she sang the wind beneath my wings. May she rest in peace. Job work well done. I know she touched many people with her God's great gift of her voice. May her memory be a blessing to everyone. And that's from Hima Sally. So uh, those are those are my messages that, that I have to do. So like I said, tomorrow, if you get a chance, come on, come on by. You know, it's gonna be like impromptu, it's not gonna be no big day. Just I'm gonna get together in the park. The weather's supposed to be good. You know, and they're gonna have plenty of children, and you know, there's gonna be other people, so there's, there's gonna be activities. So come on down, support the ICBC. Yay! <laughs> all right, so now that's it for me. All right, Shabbat Shalom. Shalom. Okay, so you heard that announcement. And we'll let the board know that you did a good job. <laughs> All right, so, oh yes. Hallelujah. Get down, Elohim, Kai, the sister back. Exalted be the living Yah in praise. Elohe Abraham, Elohe Yitzchak, by Elohe Israel, I will say them. The God of Abraham, the God of Yitzchak, the God of Israel, our forefathers. All praise is due to the Most High. Uh, I like to make an announcement in terms of um, sitting here and enjoying uh, the lecture, Gabba. It was, it was um, as you notice, I didn't fall asleep. Okay. <laughs> But um, the Most High has blessed me in so many ways. Um, I had anticipated uh, going on another trip to Israel uh, this month. And um, I have um, a communication, it's called Haaretz. It's Israeli communication. And you're talking about keeping it real, it keeps it real. Um, in Demona, basically the government of Israel is basically taking that area over. You know, our, our people, the Israelites are there. But they're taking over the, the place, they're taking over the schools, they're redoing the area. Uh, although the, the, the area is close to the Israeli nuclear uh, power plant, but I, I just came sort of depressed and saying, seeing and hearing what's going on there. And for some reason, uh, I decided to look and go someplace else uh, this year because I needed to get away after the pandemic. Um, and it turned to me that basically the most I had blessed me almost 50 years ago to take a trip to Ghana in West Africa. And I decided to do that. So uh, I'm scheduled uh, with the blessing of the most high, not this Monday, but next Monday, to go to uh, Accra, Ghana, for about six days uh, to look at it and see it. And again, to give praise to the Most High for allowing me to be alive and in this way of life for 50 years. Uh, just as a little side note, um, I come from a political point of view years ago before the Most High tapped me on my shoulder, which basically was Pan-Africanism, that the solution of the black man was in Africa. And then one day I got up, the Most High spoke to me and says, I am the creator of all mankind and set me on this path uh, to worship the Most High and be a part of his people in that way. But I've always had a little inkling about Africa in terms of it being uh, the place that our forefathers were exported and, and put in slavery and, and how we, you know, um, we have basically Blessings and a curse. I mean, uh, the curse in terms of what happened, our identity was stolen. And I'm not going to be much longer. Our identity was stolen, and we don't know who we were. But in the other hand, it did provide us with opportunities. Be it, I'm an example. Uh, being here, the most I have blessed me to be able to study and to gain a, a, a I won't call it a, 
Well, a profession. It is a profession. Uh, an engineer. Um, years ago, back in the day, we used to call it nation building skills. Um, so I've always been curious and wanted to go back and just to see. And, uh, and the most I has allowed me, uh, I'm, again, I'm scheduled, Lord willing, a week from to, uh, Monday, uh, the 30th, uh, no, the 29th, to go back to Ghana. But I conclude in saying that uh, in the lecture that the Gabbai gave, in terms of what the Most High done, did for us, I've come away with these, this, this expression, um, Adonai Mikamoka Avarakami, Yahoo is like you, Father of Compassion. And I think that if, as Gabbai was saying, it's repetitious, but if you really read it, you, you know, the, the identity of the Most High is clearly spelled out, and he has been a father of compassion. Shabbat Shalom. Thanks for sharing that with us. I didn't know that about you, so I know a little bit more about you now. But it's good to share uh, some information when we have time. Uh, so we pray that the Most High will be with you, take you there safely, and bring you back safely. Now he'll talk about doing something today while he's able. Because a lot of us don't even leave our boroughs. We stay there. I'm one of those, I don't even go with my wife, forces me to go. <laughs> Otherwise, I'd be happy to just stay right home. I'd be okay. But it's good to go out and see the world. Because, you know, you got to you say, I did this, I did that. I've been there. And you see how other people live. You come back home and you appreciate. Or maybe you might say, you know what, I'm moving back over there. And I in a better place. You might find something better. You never know. But we, we want you here, if you can, but wherever the most high leads you, obviously that's where you'll be. So uh, we've uh, did everything, so we're going to close out. I I don't really want to sing I don't alone because I, I Huh? Oh, okay, play the Adonai Love for us, and we'll have this last musical, which is Adonai Love. Uh, so we'll just listen to it, Hold on. and then we'll come down.